into tired shadow. Dinah extended her hands to catch the warmth from the dying fire. It was warm in the camp, the summer heat had not relented even at night, but the miasma had a way of making you want to reach for the fire no matter what. Next to her, Ira was running a whetstone down the length of her blade, honing it. Her mood seemed dour and morose. They hadn't seen any druge for days now, but that absence only seemed to make her friend more sombre with each passing pile that they marched. She'd wondered if Dinah was still concerned about General Cooth's strategy. She'd had her own doubts about this crazy plan to outmaneuver the Druge at first, but after Reuben had anointed her, all her fears and doubts about their chosen path had fallen away. The blessing had opened her soul to virtue. Now all she felt was an instinctive certainty that their cause was the right one. In that moment, it struck her as odd that Ira didn't feel the same. You should cheer up, little Ira. We're going to win, you know. She tried to prod her friend to break her silent introspection. Everyone says we've got them surrounded. They're trapped, caught between us and the Citadel Guard and the other armies. Ira nodded thoughtfully as if contemplating what Dinah had said, but she's never stopped sweeping the stone along the sword's edge. For a while she said nothing, but finally she put the stone down for just a moment. I hear what people are saying, that we're going to win that we've got them cornered. Complacency has blinded them to the dangers. A cornered animal will fight to the death. The druge will be no different. We need to use this time to prepare for the battle to come. She reached for the whetstone again, clearly keen to take her own advice. Dinah bit her tongue as Ira's voice trailed off. She loved her wife dearly, but sometimes she couldn't help but wonder if the paths of virtue were going to come between them one of these days. It was one thing to pursue different virtues. It was another thing entirely to fight side by side for three months under different auras. Overview. For three seasons, the highborn armies have committed themselves to a crusading storm, straining every sinew to wipe the druge from the face of Zenith. It seems they will stop at nothing to ensure the salvation of the people of Urizen, who labour under the cruel tyranny of the pernicious barbarians. This season, their efforts have been boosted by the commitment of every congregation in the Empire, with thousands of vials of precious Liao sent to the front to ensure that Imperial soldiers can throw off the baleful effects of the miasma. Even now, victory in Zenith is not assured, for the armies arrayed against them are formidable. Six full-strength Druge armies occupy Zenith, reinforced by the terrors they have unleashed in Proceris. But the death of Carvor Ipeel at the solstice has thrown the Druge forces into disarray, and the Empire have been quick to capitalise that. Now, in a stroke of strategic genius, the Druze have been utterly outmaneuvered by Imperial armies, attacking from behind their lines, cutting them off. Trapped in Zenith, encircled by Imperial forces on all sides, the Druze armies are facing oblivion if they cannot escape, and are attempting to flee. The question facing the Highborn Assembly is whether to press the advantage home. For there is another threat, one less martial, but every bit as terrible. The Druze have unleashed an unspeakable evil on Zenith. Not just Miasma Towers, they have created tortured souls by the score and turned them loose to terrorise the people. Perhaps their hope was to cow them into submission, thinking it might make them easier to rule as they did in Ossium. Perhaps it was just the essential wickedness, a way to inflict further suffering simply because they could. Death to the Druge. The Druge are preparing to flee Zenith. The Highborn Assembly could pass either or both of these mandates to focus Highborn zeal on attacking the Druge. The Highborn Generals have shown an impressive display of unity as they single-mindedly take the war to the Druge in Zenith. Their forces have marched in lockstep, confronting the enemy with a single purpose, their crusading storm firing the virtue of all who witnessed their zeal. Hundreds of highborn souls have gone into the labyrinth early, for there is a terrible price to be paid for such unwavering commitment to virtue, but their sacrifice serves as an inspiration in the battle against the Druze, and the assembly could urge every highborn citizen to commit themselves fully and shame those who turn aside from their battle against evil. Synod Mandate, High Guard National Assembly Despise the weakness that comes from pettiness and lack of vision. We send named priest, with 25 doses of Liao to urge every soldier to commit themselves to the coming battle in Zenith, 
Let us drive them into the abyss. Death to the Druge. If this mandate is enacted, then every highborn military unit from that nation that does not commit itself to supporting one of the armies fighting in Zenith will experience a two-rank penalty to their effective military strength. The effect will last for a single season, creating an impetus for the nation's independent military units to demonstrate the same commitment that the armies have shown. Acting together, they can surely drive the Druze from Zenith for good. But what happens next? The Empire have defeated the Druze countless times before. Each time the Orcs have sued for peace, each time the Empire has turned their attentions elsewhere, each time the Orcs of the Malum have regrouped and returned stronger than ever. How many times must this tragedy play out? How long must the world suffer the tyranny of the Druze? Perhaps now is the time to end this once and for all. Synod Mandate, High Guard National Assembly. Consequences are the price of ambition. We send, named priest, with 50 doses of Liao to urge every highborn soldier to commit themselves to the destruction of the Druze Empire. Let us take the fight to their heartland and destroy them utterly. Death to the Druze. If this mandate is enacted, then for the next year all casualties inflicted by any highborn army fighting the Druze will be increased by a fifth. However, any highborn army that does not find itself in battle against the Druze will suffer a 20% penalty to capture territory and any crusading storm order will not lead to a mandate if it is not against the Druze. It does not matter where the armies are fighting, Zenith, the Baron, Sarengrave, providing they are fighting against Druze forces. These two mandates are not in competition. They can be raised separately or in conjunction by the High Guard Assembly. Shadows of War The war has left a lingering evil in Zenith. If not checked this season, the territory will gain the terrorised quality. The Highborn National Assembly could pass a mandate to focus the zeal on tearing out this evil before it puts down roots, preventing this from happening and allowing the territory to heal after the Druze are gone. As the tide of war turns against the Druze in Zenith, a soft rain falls in many parts. Its gentle touch brings new life, with new shoots sprouting from the hard earth, but only long enough for them to be trampled beneath the boots of soldiers as they march to the next battle. The weather is part of a gentle enchantment cast in an attempt to heal some of the scars left by years of war. The problem here is that the war has not yet ended. It is still omnipresent. As any physic understands, the wounds cannot heal until the patient rests. The enchantment at its best is subtle causing the scars of war to recede and allowing new hope to spring up. When the terror of the Druze is finally gone, then a casting might yet help, but the ritual cannot help ease the pain of war in a land that is still groaning under the miasma. Nor can it heal the minds of those who still face the terror of the tortured souls, or risk the dangers of the restless dead. Countless winter spirits were allowed to run free in Zenith, infesting the many bodies that lie rotting in the stifling sun and causing the hungry dead to rise to seek out the flesh of the living. That would be bad enough, but black wraiths, the tormented souls of imperial heroes whose spirits have been tortured and poisoned and driven mad with hatred and fear, stalk the land, preying on anyone they can find. You cannot dull the pain of war in a territory that still labours under curses such as these. This situation threatens to become permanent if left unchecked. Even if the Druze are defeated, the Miasma Pillars will still be there, inflicting their baleful dolor over the minds of those who dwell here. Worse, with the Druze gone, the tormented souls and the ravenous winter spirits will treat to hide in dark places, only to emerge when the opportunity comes to prey upon the weak. If the situation is not addressed now, Zenith will be subjected to a lingering terror that will remain indefinitely until the Empire undertakes a major commitment to deal with the problem. No magic will wash away a taint such as this. It can only be purged by blade and spell wielded by mortal hands imbued with the burning light of virtue. After the inspiration provided by the crusading storm unleashed by the highborn armies, there is an opportunity to focus on the grim legacy of the Druze. To root out and destroy the evil before it can sink deep roots into the land, to save Zenith from this fate, 
High Guard could pass the following mandate. Synod mandate, High Guard National Assembly. Seek out the poison in your neighbour's fields. We send, named priest, with 25 doses of Liao to urge everyone to turn their focus to the miasma, the tortured souls and the restless dead that are the Druze's legacy in Zenith. Let us uproot this threat before it can spread. If this mandate is enacted by the Highborn Assembly, then the forces in Zenith will turn their attention away from attacking the retreating Druze armies and instead focus on tearing out their legacy before it can put down permanent roots. The armies will hunt down the tormented souls and put them to rest, seek out the cruel winter spirits and banish them back to the realm from whence they came. All Imperial armies fighting in Zenith this season will inflict 10% fewer casualties, but the territory will not gain the terrorised quality. Competing Mandates The mandate in Shadows of War is in competition with both of the other mandates presented here. Either highborn forces turn their ire on the Druze armies and attempt to destroy them, or they seize this opportunity to restore the land. They cannot do both. As always, if multiple competing mandates are raised successfully, the one that achieved the highest margin of success will be the one that is considered to have been enacted. Terrorised A terrorised territory is always considered to contain opposing force, impeding movement through the territory and army resupply. The labour costs of any commission in Zenith will be increased by two-fifths due to the need for additional guards and fortification. Any army that is fighting in a terrorised location will break if their military strength falls below 1,500 or below 2,250 if they are large. A territory that is terrorised is suffering under vile curses and malign threats that threaten and terrify any who linger there. Any Imperial army that is fighting in a terrorised location will break if their military strength falls below 1,500 or below 2,250 if they are large, exactly as if they were fighting a cruel enemy. The territory is always considered to contain an opposing force that attacks any army that is in the territory. The threat is not large enough to inflict damage, but no Imperial army can move through the territory. They must stop when they enter as if controlled by an enemy. In addition, no Imperial army may benefit from natural or emergency resupply while in the territory. Citizens living in a terrorised territory are fearful and oppressed by whatever is causing the terror. While the individual citizens will not suffer economic penalties from the effects, the labour costs of any commission in the territory, including fortifications and armies, are increased by two-fifths representing the need for additional guards and security measures. Removing the terrorised quality from the territory will require a major undertaking from the Empire.